I just have a really quick question about um, parents in secondary schooling. So the question is, can you explain to parents what secondary students are going through mentally and emotionally as they navigate through virtual learning and hybrid learning? Uh, you know, I, I think what secondary students are going through is, is similar to what many of us are going through at work as well. It is exhausting. The idea that you can go from school where it's in person and you have a routine and you know where your classes are and every 50 minutes you get up and you walk a few minutes and you see your friends in the hallway and then all of a sudden you're in your pajamas in your house. You may not have totally gotten ready for school in the same way. You don't see anybody for eight hours other than screens like what we're seeing right now. And and at least in my house and amongst my friends, you know, you spent the first month just trying to figure out how to make the machine work and see if your Wi-Fi uh, service was good enough that you wouldn't drop calls in the middle of a test. Um, I mean, there were, it's just exhausting trying to figure out the technology. You know, it's one thing to go to school. It's, it's a very different thing to attend school remotely. I, I think that, um, I happen to have changed my job, uh, the way that I approach my job from being in meetings with people to being uh, in meetings in my office with people on the screen. So I, I went through a lot of the same stuff. And I, I will tell you that for the first month, it was just exhausting trying to figure out the technology. How do I change my background? How do I get off a mute, which apparently is an illness we all have and we can't seem to figure out. Um, so, sorry, I, I may have rambled a bit there, but remote school and doing it on a computer is just hard. My question is, are there lasting mental health issues that come from extended periods of isolation? Quentin, that's a great question. And, and certainly based on other sort of catastrophic things that have happened in the last 50 to 100 years, it seems like there are long lasting uh, problems that can happen from, from isolation. I, I think of World War II, I think of World War I, um, though the isolation here may not be quite as significant as you know, prisoners of war or concentration camps, you, know, it, it, you have to expect that this is gonna be hard on people uh, for a period of time. You know, we're, we're still in the middle of this. Uh, in my mind, I'm still hoping that, that this vaccine helps us turn the corner, but I don't think we really know um, how this is gonna affect people long-term. We know that depression is way up. We know that anxiety is way up. We know that um, it's likely that this whole event will be a trigger for PTSD for lots of people. Um, sadly, we know that uh, child abuse and spouse abuse are up. So it, it, it seems like this is uh, sort of an awful mental health set of problems. Um, I haven't heard anything good in the mental health area during this whole pandemic. So it's, it's a big concern for all of us. Truth be told, uh, much like Dr. Curtin mentioned a few minutes ago, there, there's a fair amount we don't yet know. And, and that's one of the areas where we don't really have a handle on, on long-term effects of this, um, but it, the, the data that are in so far uh, suggests that this is going to be a long-term problem. 